This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're still on illegal acts, and we're into the, the last of the illegal acts. We've looked at wrongful trading, two offences of fraudulent trading. We looked at insider dealing, uh, and I think that was it, wasn't it? So we looked at four of them. This is the fifth one. Oh, money laundering. That was the uh, fifth. And now we're into uh, bribery, the sixth of the illegal activities. Um, bribery is um, it's not a new um, concept by any means, it's not a new concept, but it's new in legislation. Uh, 2010, the Bribery Act was introduced in the United Kingdom Parliament uh, and it applies to United Kingdom personnel wherever they may be in the world. So the United Kingdom agents of UK companies travelling overseas may deem it necessary in order to, for instance, gain an audience with the local powers that be, the mayor, the president, the king, the, so the, 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 the important movers and shakers. Uh, in these overseas countries away from the UK, this bribery act applies to the UK people in these overseas countries and it is an offence for them to pay money to anybody who is then going to facilitate an audience with the king, the, the president, the prime minister, whoever it may be. So bribery act is an all-encompassing, is a, a pan-world a uh, piece of legislation that affects uh, UK citizens. Other European countries have similar legislation and there comes a time when hope springs eternal, that, that one can only hope that in order that people can work on what is called a level playing field, that no unfair advantage will be made available and that it will be strictly illegal involving periods of imprisonment where it is found that anybody has been offering a bribe. And the same actually applies to people receiving a bribe. Hopefully they ought to uh, no longer uh, be the recipient of such money. And if I remember, I'll have a word or two about that at the end of the lecture. So anyway, bribery at targets both bribery and corruption. And there are four offences. There's, there's the obvious one about bribing another person. I'll do that in, um, I'll do that in this stuff. There's the, the obvious offence about bribing another person. Keep that in mind. Just hold that thought. Because the same offence is receiving a bribe, um, I think both of those are quite clearly obvious, aren't they? That if you receive a bribe, then you're committing an offence. You're encouraging the act. You're encouraging the, the continuance of the process of bribery and corruption. Now, this third one intrigues me and it continues to intrigue me and has intrigued me ever since the 2010 Act was passed. Because the third offence is bribing a foreign public official, an FPO I call them, to bribe a foreign public official. Well, am I not right that a foreign public official is a person? And therefore, did we not cover this criminal activity by considering the first one? Bribing another person who happens to be a foreign public official. I don't understand, and I'm a simple man, I don't understand why we have this third category. The only reason I can think is that it's rather more um, heavy in terms of punishments, but to my knowledge it isn't. It's still up to 10 years in prison, no matter what the crime. I suppose it's potentially the case that we can vary the punishment maybe at some time in the future and say bribing foreign public officials is a more heinous crime. I don't know. Do you know the word heinous? It's a more heinous crime than simply bribing a 
the buying officer of a, of a, a company in the next town. So bribing, bribing a foreign public officer, that's the third category. And we'll look at that. I'll look at it in more detail coming up. And the fourth one is a commercial organisation failing to prevent bribery. And, and again, I'll have a look at that in greater detail. So bribing is offering financial or other, advan or other advantage. Not necessarily cash. It could be a car or a holiday, or a, a trip to the zoo for you and your family, or it could be uh, any financial or other advantage made available by one person to another, in order that the recipient, not necessarily immediately, not in direct exchange, but so that the recipient will remember you. When you're, when you're travelling as a travelling salesman, and you're trying to sell and, and procure orders for the goods and products of your employer and you go to someone and say oh look at this I happen to have two mobile phones one was given to me in exchange by a motor phone and then when I looked at it it was actually all right and, and so I've got one and here's another one and I don't need to would you like a mobile phone so giving presents of value and incidental gifts and not important, a bottle of spirit, a bottle of perfume, so not, as long as it's not wildly expensive, that's okay. But anything beyond de minimis limits, do you know the word de minimis? Do you know that expression? De minimis, anything of, of negligible or of low value. Um, is not considered worthy of, of wasting time. But otherwise, if it is a substantial value, then a flight to Disney World in the United States, in California, or even in Paris, a flight for you and your family to, to Paris uh, would be considered excessive and it would be considered a bribe, even though the recipient may not themselves realize it may not themselves be in a position to return the favour or, or act on the bribe. They may no longer be the purchasing officer of the company, but you are trying to get into their good books in order to procure orders for your employer's products. So bribing is offering financial or other advantage to perform a relevant function or activity. Uh, and we, we need to know, therefore, what are relevant functions and activities. And there they are listed. It's any function of a public nature, any activity connected with a business, any activity performed in the course of a person's employment, or any activity performed by or on behalf of other persons. So let's, let's get down to basics and say, it's seeking to obtain an unfair advantage by paying goods or services or providing benefits to people who are in a position to give you that unfair advantage, to give you a push ahead of the competition. These relevant functions or activities may be anywhere in the world. This bribery act, as I mentioned, this bribery act applies to British people, United Kingdom people, wherever they are in the world. It's not confined to the shores of, of Great Britain, United Kingdom. So let's move on. Bribing a foreign public official. Presidents, kings, prime ministers, um, Department of Trade, uh, ministers, members of the government, pro foreign public officials, um, and offering bribes to them or seeking to obtain an advantage by giving them some financial or other benefit. So an offence, it's an offence to offer directly or indirectly, a financial or other advantage to an FPO intending to influence them in gaining business or an advantage in connection with your business. If you're in a competitive situation and you're, you're tendering and you're, you're trying to buy an acreage or hectareage of land because you believe that there are oil reserves underneath that specific land, would it not be sensible to pay a substantial amount into the hands of the Home Secretary of the country in which this oil, this land is thought to be? 
would it, yeah, it would. It would potentially gain you an advantage. That would be an unfair advantage and it would be a criminal activity. It would be illegal. It shouldn't happen. To my knowledge, well, you know, it does happen. You don't have to listen to BBC News for too many evenings to hear about bribery and corruption. So it does happen. It's a shame that, that the world is continuing in its corrupt activities, that some countries are notable, have the reputation for major corruption. And I have to say that I have lived recently, not now, lived recently where it was open policy to bribe a policeman. I didn't, but where it was open policy to bribe a policeman who stopped you for no apparent offence, but they were going to find an offence unless you slipped them some currency of their local, uh, their local country. So it does happen. I didn't do it. Uh, they asked me and I said, no, book me, write me a note, I'll go to court because I don't think I was guilty of the offence. And if you stand up against them, the likelihood is they will let you go. So it's an offence to offer directly or indirectly. An FPO is a person that holds an administrative, legislative or judicial position outside the UK. And so that's the offence of, of bribing a foreign public official. This next uh, line should be in, in should be in this typing. It's the commercial organisation failing. It's the fourth one, isn't it? It's this one. And it should be as, as uh, highlighted as the bribing another person receiving a bribe, bribing a foreign public official. Because the commercial organisation failing is the fourth offence under the Bribery Act. And it says a company or partnership is liable if an agent of theirs, employee or subsidiary, bribes another person intending to gain a benefit for the employer company. There has to be adequate, sufficient, appropriate procedures in place that will deter or prevent or protect this agent from the temptation of wanting to offer a bribe. The company should have protective measures, protective structure in order to protect this employee from thinking it was acceptable to offer a bribe. Defence, if the, if the company, in this particular situation, if the company can show that they did have what they thought were adequate procedures in place, appropriate to the level of risk, and adequate procedures has got six guiding principles, and they're on this next page, and the six principles are proportional procedures. You're not likely to get any advantage from open tuition by offering me a bribe. There's, there's, it's not going to happen. You're not going to, although we have, each of us has separately been offered in the past, money in order to personally mark mock exam scripts from students. If you think that we have in excess of 400,000 students, there is no way that any one of us is going to open that door. It could not be worth our while for you to even think about offering us a bribe. We don't have anything that we can uh, offer in order to give you some advantage. So forget about it. So proportionate procedures, open tuition does have its own proportionate procedures. We just say to each other, <laughs> if that chance of anybody wanting to offer us a bribe, it's not going to happen. But there are companies where, oil companies particularly, where people out in the field would surely be tempted to offer substantial amounts of money to those foreign public officials that have the authority to grant licenses for oil companies to commence their drilling and commence their, uh, their oil um, testing for wells. Commitment by management. Management should assess the nature and extent of risks faced and develop appropriate suit. Management, risk management, risk awareness and risk management is part of, when you get there, it's part of, well, you won't get it. It's part of the exam called P1, um, uh, which is governance, risk and ethics. But by the time you're doing P1, P1 will have disappeared because it's being merged with P3 into one other separate exam called strategic business leader. But P1, 
uh, does talk about and risk management, governance, risk and ethics, and risk management, and risk awareness, and risk aversion are all part of the P1 exam, and presumably will become part of strategic business leader. Due diligence, the company should apply due diligence procedures in respect of a company personnel who are at the greatest risk of um, offering bribes. People out in the field whose job it is to try and secure licenses, they're the, they're the people most likely to be tempted by the possibility of gaining an advantage if they offer a bribe, and there should be due diligence procedures within the company to seek to prevent that. Then what happens? The agent offers to pay the bribe, and then goes back to the company and says, if we pay $500,000 to this person, then we'll get the license, or we will have an audience with the president. And the, the executives of that company should say, no, and probably we do not want to work with you anymore. As an employer, as an agent of ours, we don't want to work with you because you are enticing and you are encouraging us to break the law the Bribery Act of 2010. Monitor your communication. This is education. This is a education and training that the company ought to have um, continuing. It's like it's like ACCA requires you to have continual professional develop, continuing professional development even after you've qualified. And similarly with the Bribery Act, this is one of the adequate and appropriate procedures. There should be training and communication and education carried on within the company in order to make sure that all employees that are at risk are fully up to date with reference to the sanctions against this concept of offering bribes. Monitoring and review procedures should be regularly reviewed and improved as necessary, but this is the same with any system. When you come to F8 and you learn about internal control systems, these have to be continually reviewed, continuously reviewed, updated, improved, and it's one of the jobs of the auditor to seek to establish and to show how systems can be improved and make those recommendations to clients. Adequate is a matter for the court to say, I think they're adequate, says I. The court says, I don't think they're adequate at all. So in that situation, uh, adequacy is for the court to make the decision to see whether it is or is not. Uh, adequate procedures. Hospitality, reasonable and proportionate, it's not prohibited. If you buy someone, I don't know, a Christmas hamper um, or, a, or an invitation to the corporate, um, the corporate entertainment day where you get all the buying officers from all the different companies that you want to supply and you invite them all for a, a, a day at the local golf course for a game of golf or a day at the race course to watch the horses racing. That's acceptable, as long as it's proportionate. That would be out of proportion for a, a poor small company like Old Intuition, but it would be well within uh, immateriality if it was somebody like Shell UK or British Telecom. And finally, the penalties. Individuals found guilty faces imprisonment up to 10 years. Uh, guilty companies liable to an unlimited fine, but in addition there's reputation loss because people may no longer wish to deal with that company where we know that that company is potentially corrupt. <laughs> Being a cynic, it may be that some people say, oh, the company is potentially corrupt, maybe we should be dealing with them. But that is cynical and that's not Hopefully, it's not something that will that will dissipate through the profession of accountancy. And potentially, civil claims against the directors for failing to implement adequate procedures. Just very, very finally, before I come back to what I was going to say, and I said I, m I might, if I remember, I might mention it at the end. Just finally, then, Munir Patel is the first conviction. This was, I think, somewhere in 2012, where Munir Patel was convicted. He was, he'd received £500 in, from a person who was in court facing a penalty for a driving offence and he'd paid Munir Patel, a, position, a person who had a position to do this, for suppressing the detail, a criminal record of an earlier driving offence. Munir Patel is serving, or oh, did serve, three years and damaged his reputation and lost his job and now finds it difficult to get another job because 
He's a dishonest person. He cannot be trusted. Okay. There was an article. I thought it was a very clever article, but when I've when I've mentioned it in the past, people have said, no, no, that's not clever at all. I think it's a very clever idea. The penalty for under the bribery act is for, let's say I'm offering money to you. It's for me to offer you money and, and, and for you to accept the bribe. It's an offence for me to offer the bribe. So we're both of us guilty. That being so, it is in neither your interest nor in my interest for this to be disclosed. For this to be discovered. So you're not going to say anything. And I'm not going to say anything. So life can go on. This is only hypothetical. I'm not accusing you in any way of being corrupt. In the same way that I'm not accusing me of being corrupt. So it's in both our interests. To stay very quiet about this bribe. That has been offered and, and received. So it was a suggestion. That it would continue to be an offence for a person to receive a bribe, but it wouldn't be an offence for a person to offer a bribe. So here's me offering it to you, and you receive it, you've committed an offence, but I haven't. And in fact, it's then in my interest, because you could then develop the thought that said, in fact, anyone receiving a bribe upon discovery shall not only forfeit the money, and pay it back to the person that offered it, but she'll pay the same amount by way of penalty into the public coffers, into the public purse, and they themselves will be guilty of a criminal offence for receiving a bribe, but the person who blew the whistle, the person offering and giving the bribe, would not have any liability. Now there is an interesting concept, because it means that I can go around offering a new receiver, Possibly not you, but you receive what you receive, and you were guilty, and I'm not. And it's then in my interests, having now been granted the license to do the drilling for oil, it's now in my interest to disclose to the authorities that you have received a bribe, and that I can get that money back, and it's the same amount will go into the public purse, and you will lose your job, and maybe even worse. In some countries, it may not just be a job that's at risk, it could be your life that's at risk. If the president, God bless these corrupt presidents, if the president discovered that you were taking bribes and not disclosing them or sharing them with him, so the recipient of the bribe would be found guilty, the offeror would be exonerated from blame. And that, I think, is an interesting proposition but it doesn't exist it's just me stimulating your interest buds and that's it for this chapter